So one of the main challenges with group conversations and meetings is not being able to share your opinions and your ideas and your insights and your thoughts. But unless you speak up for yourself, no one's going to hear any of that. So I'm going to share with you some phrases you can use so that you're more easily able to speak up when you're in group conversation settings, be it in a casual conversation or in a meeting. All right, let's get started. So here are some phrases you can use when you want to add to the conversation and when you want to be a part of what's going on. You can say, I have something to say. I have something to say. So I have something to say on this topic or I have something to say on this subject. You can say, may I add, and then say what you want to say, or I would like to add whatever you want to say. So I would like to add something that you want to say, or may I add, and then you share what you want to say. Now, if the topic is very similar to what somebody has just discussed, you can say, speaking of, and then dive into what you want to say, or on the topic of, and then say what you want to say. So these two phrases are really more appropriately used when you want to expand on what has just been said or elaborate or maybe even clarify. But that's very important to tie it to what has just been said. The other thing you can say if you want to add to a topic that is just discussed is while we're on the topic of blah, 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 I'd like to say this, or how about this, or what about this? You can also pose it as a question. Mind if I jump in? Mind if I say something? Mind if I share my thoughts on this? You're asking a question, however, it's a rhetorical question. People are not gonna necessarily respond to you. And if they do, they'll probably, most likely they'll say, sure, what do you have to say? What are your thoughts? Right, so they'll respond in a positive way, but phrasing it as a question can come across as a little bit more sort of calm. So if you feel like using that, then go ahead. It's absolutely fine. The other thing you can say is, I'd like to share my two cents. Or after you share something, you can say, those are my two cents. So in English, the phrase, my two cents, is a way to show that you are sort of modestly sharing your thoughts even though they might be very eye-opening, very insightful thoughts, you're being modest about them. You're being quite humble. Just two cents, right? That's all it is, two cents kind of thing. But it's a nice phrase. And again, it's a way of showing like the humility around what you have to say. And the last one you can use is what I'd say is. So I'd, right, what I would say, but in the contraction, what I'd say. So what I'd say is this, or do, 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 that's what I would say, or that's what I'd say. But again, if you're trying to get into the conversation, it's probably better for you to say, what I'd say is you lead them into what you're going to say. You're priming them and you're allowing them the time to focus their attention on you right? What I'd say. So you're prepping them to listen to you. Because if you start with the meat of what you're going to say, they may or may not have heard it, right? They might be busy taking notes, or maybe they're listening to the person who just spoke, or maybe they're thinking about what they want to say, right? So when you phrase it first with what I'd say is, and then jump into the meat of what you're trying to tell everyone, then it gives them some time to process. All right, so now let's talk about at what points can you jump into the conversation. Your best bet, especially if you don't want to interrupt someone, which is a good thing, would be to wait until they have finished. So you can tell when someone's done if they end in a lower intonation, meaning it's at the end of their sentence, before they're about to jump into something else. So before they jump into something else, they will lower their voice at the end, just like we finish a sentence in English. And then you take the opportunity to say, what I'd say is this, or speaking of, 
blah, 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 or one of the other ones that we shared in this video. The other thing you can do is to wait until there's a pause. Now, if there are a lot of people in the conversation, it's probably not as likely for there to be much pause. And some people in general tend to be a little bit afraid of pause, not afraid, afraid, but uncomfortable with silence. And so you might notice that there's not much time with pause. Actually, that would be a good challenge. In your next meeting or your next group conversation in English, pay attention to how many pauses there are in the conversation. How many times are there just a little bit of silence, a few seconds of silence until somebody else jumps into the conversation? So that might be a good way just to get a sense of how hard you're going to have to fight for some airtime, for some time for you to hold the floor, meaning allowing you to share your thoughts, ideas, opinions, and anything that you would like to speak about. So I hope you use these sentences and I hope you have a look at some of your conversations and just see how much of a pause there is so that you're able to jump in and get ready the next time you do have a nice group conversation or a meeting to bust out some of these phrases and really make sure that you get to speak up and share your wonderful thoughts and ideas and insights. Because like I said, unless you actually share them, nobody's going to know how amazing your ideas are, right? So you might as well take advantage of the opportunity to speak up when you can. All right, that's it for me today, everyone. I will see you in the next Advanced English Conversation. Bye for now.